Nginx is an open source, fast, lightweight, and high performance web server that can be used to serve static files. Nginx is a high performing web server that is responsible for handling the load of some of the largest websites on the internet. It is especially good at handling many concurrent connections and excels at forwarding or serving static content. Nginx can also be used as a reverse proxy, and that is a use case we are going to discuss in this video. So let's have a quick look at the architecture of Nginx being used as a reverse proxy. Let's suppose you have a network, and in this example, we are using a virtual cloud network or virtual private cloud, which is a virtual cloud where all of your resources exist. In this VCN or VPC, we have two subnets. One is a private subnet and the other one is a restricted subnet. By private subnet, what, uh, what, is, uh, what it means is that the users connect to this private subnet after connecting to their VPN. So there is no public access to this subnet. So in effect, it is, this is also a secure connection. But our actual database resides in a restricted subnet, which doesn't have any connectivity even through the VPN. The only way this database in the restricted subnet can be accessed is through the private subnet. So the end users, if they want to connect to the database in the restricted subnet, first get connected to this reverse proxy, which is in the private subnet. And then this reverse proxy reverses that connection to the database. Now, this reverse proxy, we are using Nginx. There are also other products, but Nginx is very lightweight and fast and really facilitates the concurrency of the connections. And in the Oracle database, which is an enterprise grid database, there are thousands and thousands of sessions which get connected at the same time. And Nginx has a capability to handle that workload. Okay, so that is the basic architecture what we are going to implement here. First and foremost, th th these are the simple four commands to install and verify and validate your Nginx on your Linux machine. And these commands are valid on your Red Hat compatible ones and CentOS. And there are similar commands for other Linux distribu distributions. You can also use Nginx on Windows, but in this video, we are going to discuss only the Linux distributions. So, in the first command, we are installing the EPEL repository for Nginx package. Here, EPEL stands for Extra Package for Packages for Enterprise Linux. Since YUM as a package manager does not include the latest version of Nginx in its default repository, so that is why we are installing EPEL. Installing EPEL will make sure that Nginx on your Red Hat Enterprise Linux or CentOS stays up to date. In the second command, we are updating the repository. In the third command, we are installing the Nginx through the yum. In the final command, with question mark, we validates and verifies that Nginx is up and running and installed on that machine. Cool. So here in this slide, you can see that the Nginx is configured as a reverse proxy. In order to configure Nginx, you need to log in as root and then go to etc nginx nginx.corner file, open it, and then simply paste this file with your own values. And the only value you need to change here is um, where you will put in your server name and your port. Normally, Oracle database listens on 1521, which I have put in here. Now let's discuss the structure of this Indian X configuration file. One of the first thing you might notice when you're looking at the main configuration file is that it is organized in a tree-like structure marked by sets of brackets. In Nginx documentation, the areas that these brackets define are called as contexts because they can contain configuration details that are separated according to their area of concern. The most general context is the main or global context. And then as you can see, we have an events context in this configuration file, which is actually contained in the main context. 
This event context is used to set global options that affect how Nginx handles connections at a general level. There can only be a single event context defined within the Nginx. And then we are also defining in the first line as uh, the user will be Nginx and then we are setting worker processes. So the worker connection and the worker processes from the section allows you to calculate max clients you can handle. So if you think that your uh, worker, worker connection at the same time might be greater than 1024, feel free to enhance it, but make sure that your server hardware is able to handle it. So if you see in the stream context, we have upstream target server. And this is where you define your target host name. You can also even give your IP address here. And just in case if you're using um, AWS RDS database, you can give the whole RDS database name here and then the port name. And then on the last section where the server is defined, we tell uh, Nginx that we're listening, the target is listening on 1521. Um, and then it's a pass through proxy, which is passing this port and uh, server IP address with the connection to the database. So once you configure this nginx.conf file, then all you need to do is to restart your nginx daemon on your local Linux host, and you can do that through systemctl restart nginx. And then that should be done. And in the future, if you need to change any configuration here, like IP address or port, once you make the change in this file, then just bounce your Nginx process. So that's all there is to it. If you have any questions or feedback, please put them in the comments. Thank you.